Thank you, Linda. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Everybody hear me? Um, I wanted to thank uh, Linda Ballantyne for her hard work. I think she's the hardest working executive director for a chamber I've ever met. I, and we work with a lot of chambers, so she's, she's nonstop and she's been wonderful. I also want to thank Lindsay for putting some flyers together for us last minute and uh, Andrea Fox as well, who's been very helpful. And I appreciate you guys having good energy. I also want to thank Mayor Tom Rooney. I asked him this morning if I can speak first because I wanted him to upstage me <laughs> after that, so because I don't want to do that to him. So. But uh, no, I, I'm, you know, I'm very excited to be here. I'm very excited to present the information today because it's a culmination of many uh, months of work and also the support of the city, which in turn has created an opportunity for uh, not only residents and the small guy in the city, which is what the program's about, really helping um, a market segment that was very vacant and there was no opportunity for a lot of homeowners uh, to get really fantastic rates, competitive pricing individually. So this program and this law uh, that, that began uh, about in 2009 gave that opportunity. Um, and um, it's called the Municipal Opt-Out Aggregation Law, or, you know, in this slide says, what is municipal opt-out aggregation? Essentially what it, what it does, it allows, the law in 2009 allows for municipalities to uh, pass a referendum that gives the authority for city officials to buy in a, in a, in a bulk format uh, all small businesses and residential customers. And just to give you a little bit of background of the history of you know, competition in Illinois, it started way back in 1997 with a mandatory transition period. It was just for, small, for uh, commercial and industrial large um, users of, of power, right? This is on the electricity side. And um, there was no choice really for residential customers, for homeowners. So in, uh, in 2002, uh, there, there was a, a pilot program that started and then residential customers were able to get uh, competitive rates, but there was very few suppliers. You know, it wasn't really opened up to the market. I think there was only about four suppliers in the state. But they were really focused on industrial customers. So really there was nobody offering to the homeowners, to the residential customers. And then after that there was a price rate freeze, which was good, so rates stayed low. But it didn't create competition. There was no what they call headroom. There was no savings. And so you didn't have a lot of suppliers coming in and undercutting the utility rates. Essentially, that's what you're doing. You're trying to undercut the electric supply portion of your bill, which I'll go into you know, briefly slides down, you know, in the next few slides. So in 2007, I don't know if you remember, the rate freezes were removed and your rates went up for about 30%. It was a, a very significant increase in, in rates. And uh, what people started to do is create aggregation programs, kind of like this, with chambers, with church groups, to, to have strength in numbers. And um, the lawmakers really saw that there was a value in aggregating and creating economies of scale. So in 2009, the municipal opt-out law um, allowed for the amending of the Illinois Power Agency Act. And now um, with the, uh, the, the process of passing a referendum, um, city government was able to aggregate instantly all the residents through an opt-out program, meaning that if people got letters to, to, to participate in the program, they didn't have to send it back, they didn't have to join, they didn't have to write up. Uh, so what it created was an instantaneous aggregation, um, as opposed to an opt-in where people have to send in a form to participate. What happens there is that you have a 90% subscription rate, as opposed to the other, ha the other side of an opt-in program where you only have about 6 to 10% if that. That's a very successful one. So um, because uh, you know, of this municipal opt-out law and, and the rate freezes, now we have over 20 suppliers uh, that are licensed in the state of Illinois. Um, and what are the benefits? Another choice, simply. Um, you have a municipal rate now 
Um, deregulation allows you to pick from, all, from you know, over 20 suppliers. I'm sure you guys have gotten letters in the mail and you know, gift cards or whatever. Now you have a municipal choice. And those who are living in Rolling Meadows, most likely you're on the municipal rate at this point. And I'm going to share some really strong numbers on what it does to a community when you have this program in place. Uh, the individual can save as much as 25 to 30 percent off their electric supply cost. Um, another benefit is that there's no change. It's still the same bill. ComEd continues to be your provider. Uh, if there's any outages, you call the same 800 number that's on your bill. So there's no issues there. Um, and if you're already on with the supplier, you were automatically taken out, you were opted out. Uh, and you were removed, so there was no confusion. And only those homeowners that weren't on a contract get to participate. And so what happens is with this aggregation is that essentially you become that commercial industrial customer that, that, <clears throat> that has had these great rates for so many years. So what did Rolling Meadows do? Essentially what I, what, what I talked about before, um, they uh, placed a referendum ballot question on the March 20th uh, ballot, uh, uh, primary election in 2012, uh, asking the voters whether this is going to make sense. And a majority of voters did say yes. They voted, they passed it, uh, which is great. And uh, they approved it. And so it, it basically includes homeowners and businesses that are less than 15,000 kilowatt hours a year. And that's your typical nail salon, your, your office, your storefront office. Um, you know, anything that's probably less or about 2,000 square feet of, of property. So you get an idea of what a small business that's using 15,000 kilowatt hours a year is. That's just the, the question that you, if you live in Rolling Meadows, you probably vote in it. Or if you live in sur surrounding towns. I know that a lot of the towns in, 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 in the Comet Territory in Illinois um, created these municipal opt-out aggregation programs. So, um, after the referendum passed, uh, Rolling Meadows, through Good Energy, sought bids from alternative retail energy providers. And just to be clear, because I know that uh, Linda was explaining us as a provider, we are a consultant. So we are essentially uh, the uh, agency company that goes out, seeks bids, and comes out with the best rate. What were the results? Out of five bidders, Rolling Meadows was able to give the homeowners a 4.62 price. Okay, what does that mean? Um, I'm going to skip a slide here. Sorry. <laughs> I'm jumping the gun here. Okay. Well, out of 7,000 households which are, are in the jurisdiction of Rolling Meadows, which average, average about 9,800 kilowatt hours per household per year, that adds up to about 68 million kilowatt hours for the year. Uh, the municipal aggregation rate that we were able to get for Rolling Meadows, the 462, four, the ComEd's price to compare if you're a non-space heating rate class is 8.3 cents. If you're in a space heating class, you're a little bit less, 6.273. And this is on the ICC's plug-in Illinois site, so you guys can verify these numbers. The savings on the rate was 3.5 cents per kilowatt hour. What does that mean back to the community of Rolling Meadows? which statistically 90% of that money is spent in the local economy, $2.4 million back to the city and to the, to the community, which, is, which we're very excited about. I'm just going to back up. And we were able to do and get that rate because we leverage multiple communities. We, we have the largest um, buying group in the state of Illinois, the largest intergovernmental buying group in Illinois, which consists of about 140 municipalities, uh, 485,000 households. <clears throat> so not only did Rolling Meadows aggregate all their residential um, uh, 
citizens and homeowners, but we also aggregated them with other communities that are in our aggregation. So, you know, what, what does this mean to the chamber? What, you know, um, my colleague Tom Lay is going to come up briefly and, and talk about certain products that we could offer the chamber, and I'm going to cut it off quickly here. But what does it mean? It creates a synergy. It creates um, a, a, an offering to not only uh, large industrial customers, but also small commercial, medium-sized customers, homeowners. And then it comes full circle, where now an, a, a market that was underserved has created this aggregation. And now we can come back to the small business, come back to this medium-sized business, and everybody's working together because you have this aggregation in place. So now you could creatively leverage the aggregation. And that's, that's why we're here, to, to offer that leveraging power that we have to small businesses and commercial businesses. And I'm going to stop right here. Um, just let one last point. In, in the state of Illinois, the combined savings over the course of a year was $60 million back to the state of Illinois, which is exciting. I'm going to hand it over to my colleague, Tom Lay, who's the director of our Midwest Markets, and he's going to talk about the products. Uh, yeah. And we're going to do a microphone transfer. All right, thanks, Javier. Um, and, and again, thanks for, for having us. And as Javier pointed out, in the municipal aggregation that he's just summarized here, businesses that consume more than 15,000 kilowatt hours annually are excluded from that. They've got to sign an individual contract. And the average home in, in Illinois residential account consumes between 10 and 12,000 kilowatt hours annually. So a business that consumes 15,000 kilowatt hours or less is a very small business. It's a barber shop, it's a nail salon, it's a, it, a one or two uh, employee insurance agent uh, office location. And those are very important businesses and I'm sure that Rolling Meadows uh, Chamber of Commerce has a number of those members. But most of the businesses represented here in this room are larger than that. And in many cases, most of the business, businesses represented in this room, probably the electric accounts of your employers, are, have already chosen an alternative supplier and, and may have been doing so for a number of years. My, my background in, in the energy industry is I have been working in the alternative retail electric supply industry as as a supplier since 1997 when the law was signed in, into effect. So for most of my career in, in uh, energy in Illinois, I have been a supplier and then I, I recently joined Good Energy to get on the customer representation side. So when you work with Good Energy, the suppliers know that there's expertise that, that I have and, and other employees have where they have performed that task. And so we know it from the inside. And uh, our clients get, get the benefit of that. So let's see. So when when you see prices, particularly for a residential account, a very small business account, that's usually just one number. <clears throat> and we had a slide here that illustrated that the price is actually made up of, of a lot of different uh, components. There's the delivery component, there's the supply component, there are some other miscellaneous components, renewable energy and uh, other aspects of that. And so that's one thing that drives the price. The biggest element that drives the price is the wholesale market. And for the, the end user, the retail customer, you're usually fairly far removed from the wholesale market because you're not purchasing in large enough quantities to buy on the wholesale market. Or for those prices that are traded in very large bulk power blocks to be meaningful to you, just like any other commodity, just like agricultural products or crude oil, or when, when we see numbers uh, of dollars for a barrel of crude oil. One barrel of crude oil is not traded 
hundreds of thousands of barrels of crude or, uh, oil are transacted in every transaction on the wholesale market and that works it, its way all the way down to a higher priced retail product because you're buying in very small quantities. As we aggregate together residential customers and the very small businesses as we did in Rolling Meadows, we have greater leverage because we're buying closer to the wholesale price. And so that's what we want to offer, implement a program for the members of the Chamber of Commerce here in Rolling Meadows to join the program and as we continue to, and any business that is below 15,000 kilowatt hours, and we, we can do that assessment very quickly at, at no cost to the member, can join the existing program at the existing price that you've seen here. If you're a larger qualifying account, we've, we've got to negotiate a contract for you. But what we want to do is put together an aggregation and build it over time so that as we roll forward with Rolling Meadows, and that contract comes up for renewal a little bit later this year, we can add larger components uh, of load to it and negotiate even better prices. And the way we do that is some of the uh, uh, aspects of the way your accounts use electricity is referred to as the load shape. Some load shapes are illustrated here. Uh, in the upper left is, is a typical office building that operates during the day. It's a 24-hour uh, timeline along the bottom. And so most of the energy is consumed in the middle of the day when most of the equipment is being used and when weather patterns drive heating and cooling cycles. If you move over to the right, if you look at a, a larger hotel, the occupancy is more continuous. And they're, they're running air conditioners even in the winter. Even on a winter day, a hotel is often running an air conditioner and a heater at the same time to, to balance uh, out the, uh, the temperature inside. And they've, they've got kitchen equipment and a lot of other equipment. It maintains a much steadier load. A, uh, uh, a hospital might look like that as well. It's a 24-hour occupancy. The difference between day and night is not as significant, or the peak and the off-peak hours. Uh, if we look at a theater, that has what we call a non-typical load. It actually uses most of its energy later in the day, and electricity is traded on the wholesale market in hourly slices. Each hour has a price. The retail customer just sees one price, but we're familiar with what those hourly prices are, how they vary, how they vary by month, how they vary by season, and so by combining loads, into a block, you're buying A, a larger quantity, but you're also buying closer to a flat load profile, closer to a block of energy in, in shape, and that is how power, electricity, is traded on the wholesale market. The closer we can move to, from the retail individual user to a group of retail customers, and then by aggregating the load shapes, not only with Rolling Meadows, but we represent the largest number of customers in municipal aggregation in the state of Illinois. And so we are aggregating your loads with other accounts together at the same time and leveraging those quantities for the benefits of our customers. So we, in essence, are representing you as a wholesale buyer in the market. We will align your, your contract procurements as much as possible with others that, that we're doing. And we, and we often develop a bridge contract that identifies uh, terms that are meant to bridge to the end of a uh, large uh, customer base that we have. And so then we can combine your accounts with uh, those other existing clients and we are, in essence, transacting on the wholesale market, reducing that ultimate uh, end user price that you're paying because now you've got the buying power. Even if you're a large business, even if you're a Northrop Grumman, even if you're an AT&T that operates lots of facilities, 
and your procurement process is very administratively complex. We understand that. We work with very large commercial and industrial businesses. But by combining with the total load that we have, because ultimately, electricity is electricity. It is just a commodity. And once it's on the wire, it doesn't know where it's going. And it doesn't care. It doesn't discriminate between the, re the uh, commercial, the industrial, or the residential customer. And so we, we are developing that type of, of program, as well as the typical product that you buy at home is a fixed price, single price product. It's one price. It's, it's the same all year in, in the case of our municipal aggregations. And it's the same all periods during the day. For businesses, though, for uh, hospitals and other facilities that have more unique power use, we will evaluate as part of our service what type of product is the best product for you. And it may be, and, and we'll make recommendations, it may be a fixed price product. But other products that you can consider and that we'll do a third party evaluation, and we're not pushing a product that we're seeking to sell, like a supplier does, because it fits their business plan more favorably, we're evaluating what your needs are and determining is an index product uh, a product that might be more appropriate for you. And that's where you take a certain amount of exposure to the varying price of electricity rather than having a single price that's fixed for a two-year period, for example. You might have a more varying Price, where you can tolerate some fluctuations with the market price in exchange, in other words, you're taking on a certain amount of, of uh, greater amount of risk, just as you might in your personal investment portfolio, for some benefits. And, and we can uh, develop a program for you, a proposal that would uh, discuss, present the pros and cons of that, whether we think it, it, it fits your business or your industry well and whether it matches with any of the aggregation components that we're implementing. Or a hybrid product like is illustrated uh, on the right where a certain portion of the bill is fixed, a certain portion of your usage in each hour, the price is fixed and it's set, but all the usage above that, as determined by your, uh, your monthly metering use, is at a market price. And there are certain times of the year when the market price is more favorable than others. And so that by uh, evaluating that seasonal use and that time of day use with your business profile, again, from a third party basis, we're working for, for you as opposed to working for a supplier who generally has a, a product that they, set of products that they prefer to sell because it fits their business plan better. And so that's what magically is always the best product uh, for you. We're evaluating that from a third party uh, standpoint and evaluating your needs and giving you advice uh, as well as uh, handling the administrative and contracting components of that negotiation as, as Javier summarized. And then as I, I've made a few comments about the, the wholesale market. The wholesale market moves every day. It actually moves every hour. But there is a daily price that's posted every day. And it, it moves significantly. So in addition to developing aggregation, the power of volume of buying in a larger bulk, we're also evaluating the product, the different types of, of products that uh, you can choose from and the pros and cons of each and getting something that's tailored for you and still leverages the buying power that we have. We're also evaluating market. There are certain market points, there are certain price points in the market when it is not to your advantage to lock into a, a longer term contract. Uh, I, I haven't forgotten, and I'm sure many people in the room haven't forgotten, when interest rates were over 10%. Uh, it, it's, it's a far cry from where they're at now, but to borrow money to anybody who initiated a mortgage at that time, you're paying a very high price. At, at, that, at that point in the market, it's not to your advantage to initiate a long term uh, contract. At lower parts of the market, it, it is more advantageous. And we are evaluating on a daily basis what the wholesale market opportunities are and where is a good time for you to buy uh, and even split up the points 
uh, during the market cycle when you actually are fixing your price. So these are much more sophisticated approaches to the market. It's very time consuming. Uh, it's very uh, analytical and administratively intense. But that's what good energy, uh, th those are the services that we offer to uh, our clients as well as ultimately uh, representing you in selecting and negotiating a supply.